Hey everyone, my name is Kabi and today I'm gonna teach you the easy yet effective build orders you may use at the beginning of your World Legends journey as a ladder competitive player. So let's get started. And first we are gonna learn the build order for the light faction. So once you appear on the map, make sure to take one workers off the gold mine and order it to the wood instead because the fourth one on the gold doesn't give you too many additional gold income. So rather than that, uh, you need more wood in the beginning. So for that reason, you also want to change the rally point from your castle Let's on the wood work. as well. Then you are adding the workers until you have 14 foot and uh, hold it for a little bit so that you will be able to order the barracks and get uh, a little additional wood for that. So once you order the barracks, you add the 8th worker. And this is your last worker for now. You wanna stop at 16 foot and then wait uh, until you will have enough resources to add the farm. This is the basic build order, so you get 8 workers, 16 wood, barracks and the farm. Try to remember it for light as well as for the dark, because this is the most basic thing you need to do in War Legends. So now you don't do anything until your barracks is ready. And once it's ready, you add the swordsman, and then you get uh, you already have the 15 mana so that you can use the gold rush scroll. So this is the simple progression you want to learn and uh, just repeat it in every game you play in the beginning. So the barracks, the farm, the swordsman, the gold rush and the tier 2. We bin the swordsman at the control group and send it to the enemy's base using the move command in order to scout. And we also add two more swordsmen to be hired. And then we are looking for the resources to add the second barracks before your tier 2 is ready. So now that I have like 30 seconds to go still, I'm ordering my second barracks. And that means that I am doing the build order in the correct way. So I add one more swordsman because in this style you really want to rely on your swordsman and you keep ordering them until you will uh, already have your next feature ready. And uh, the next feature is the elven tree. So once your second barracks is ready, you want to add the elven tree. It doesn't really matter where exactly. And we are starting it and we are still producing the swordsman once we have enough gold for that. Now my scout uh, is uh, on the enemy's base, so starting to hover around his place to figure out what does he do but at the same time I must remember to add the second barracks because we are gonna hire many additional units so I need to move camera back on my main base and add the second farm that is very important because otherwise we will be capped at the 44 foot or whatever you have with your farm level uh, very soon and uh, in the meantime I'm still adding the last swordsman, but my next unit is going to be the archer. Now I see his production building, so I'm gonna come closer to see what it was, and it is the dwarven fort. So now I'm pretty much aware that my enemies is playing dwarves, and uh, at this moment I'm starting to build archer. And actually when you will be learning this build and playing it for the first time, I suggest that you don't uh, waste too much time on scouting and just try to do your things the correct way. And uh, your thing is after you got enough swordsmen, you keep producing archers and you just A move everything you have in the enemy's base. And this push is very deadly and uh, not uh, every opponent in the world can ever hold it. So my units are starting to rally at the enemy's base. Currently we can notice that a couple of my archers are lagging in the background, which is not really good, but now I use the select all army and send everything in his place. And in the meantime, while my army is going, I'm adding the hero altar and I'm also sending 
uh, two of my workers on the different chests. But that is uh, facultative, that is not too important what is important and to get enough units and to send it, send it in the enemy's base. So this build daughter doesn't include any kind of heroes, it doesn't include many different units as well as the scrolls. For the whole game I'll only play that one gold rush scroll and for the rest of time I'm just adding more archers and uh, currently I'm also upgrading my main building uh, to the third tier because I want to get the third farm to get more yes. units and uh, now so that my enemy lost all of his units it is pretty much done because I can take down his production and uh, well I can see that he is taken up to the factory probably trying to get the bikers but uh, I can assure you that it is not impo uh, it is not possible anymore because I have way too many archers so uh, this is how easily I can win this game just to do the correct things and uh, send the units because my build order was just better it was plainly plainly better and you can win many games just doing the things like this so i can suggest you to learn this build order and once you do it you can also adapt it you can place Dwarven Forge or the Human Monument or wherever you want, but that basic progression, the barracks, the farm, uh, the swordsman, the gold rush and the tier 2 can lead you up to the good timings and the good um, economy. Uh, and that will allow you to use the advantage of that to get the victor. Interesting part is that you don't really have to do anything complicated. You just have to do the simple things right. And now let's take a look how to play for the Dark Faction. And the main idea here is not that it is particularly the Dark Faction, because the basic idea is very similar, but rather that we will use the hero. So for the light we use the simple version without hero and this version will be slightly more difficult because we will also add the hero you can as well use the hero build for the light or no hero build for the dark and uh, using just the same basic idea you will i think uh, really quickly pick up how to do that how to adapt that but anyways we are still doing the same thing one worker of the gold to the wood uh, foreign worker uh, foreign food we get the barracks we add one more worker it is 16 food now we halt the workers we don't build any workers anymore and once we have 200 wood we add the pig steer. so barracks farm swordsman and tier 2 you remember the same thing here instead of the swords when we have the goon but otherwise it is still the same we have 50 mana and we can use the gold rush scroll in a second right now we are using it and we want to get the tier 2 all the same as we played for the light we have not 18 uh, not 19 foot but 20 foot because goon is 4 foot worth but it is not important we are still building it to the first control group sending it for scouting but our next goal is to get the undead obelisk we are gonna build the undead uh, race this time around but of course using the same idea you can play every race but now we can use what is easier because this is the guide for the beginners so uh, and that faction uh, and, and that race is probably the easiest now so we are just getting goons not doing anything and once we have 400 wood we get the undead obelisk and we are keep producing the goons but before we add more goons after the under obelisk we also want to add the, add the hero altar why is that because hero altar and the under obelisk take the same time to build so we don't want to have the big gap between order and them so we are holding the next goon for a bit and then we are keeping producing it and we also 
as in the previous build. We wanna add the second farm once we have enough production. Why is that? It's because when our production will kick off, it will produce many units quickly. So we need to get the food in advance. So I keep uh, hovering around his base to find out what he's doing, but it is not really important to be honest with this build. I don't really care. What I care is to cut everything uh, when I have like my hero altar like half produced. I cut everything to get enough resources for the eater. The eater costs 600 gold and 300 wood and uh, I stopped producing my goons at that point and once I got the eater uh, some morning I'm starting to add the skeleton archers for the end of the game. So from now on I'm producing the skeleton archers every time I have the resources for that. And I also have another 50 mana, so I want to use the higher acceleration scroll so that I get more skeleton archers. And I just select bloody everything and send it a move in his base, in the middle of his base. And he's about to die honestly because he doesn't have much. And we are going to the bottom of his base and see that he has two factories. It is again the attempt to attack up to the bikers in the future probably, because bikers show the perfect results in our tournament we asked recently, but uh, my skeleton archers will, will take down those easily most likely and you will see how it will happen. I also took one worker and with, with that one worker I also used a move command. I took that worker on the enemy's base to build the undead tower. And the life hack is that the A moved worker is not considered occupied. So when it is A moving, you add the tower and that worker is being forced for the job. If I would be just moving with single tap, that worker would not be forced on the job. And I, I'd had to tap on the worker and tap on the building ghost but then it since i a moved it it was just forced on it immediately and all i had to do here is i activated my eater ability and forgot about it and when i can i'm trying to use my skeleton archers to attack the helicopters but honestly i could even not care about that they would uh, pretty much take care of themselves. Uh, my enemy was able to take down the tower, but I just rebuild it and uh, I keep producing units. Uh, now I even have time to move my low HP goon on the chest, but that is not even necessary. I'm just trying to show you more things like scouting, uh, obtaining the chest and things like that, because you have to do it when you face the strong opponent, but whenever you face just uh, the normal opponent on the ladder, you pretty much can win even without doing these complicated things, just again by, do by doing the simple things right. And in this game all I did, all I've done is the very simple basic things in the right uh, progression, one after one, and that's it. So I'm just not lagging. I'm not building two factories, which is a mistake. I'm not building the two race buildings, which is a mistake. I'm just doing the correct things right. So just try to learn both of these build orders, get your first victories, enjoy the game, and then you learn how to adapt your play to add more strategies. I hope this video was useful for you. Make sure to write down in the comments and sub to my channel to see more in the future. For this one that's it, thank you for watching and bye bye.